There's a trans episode of the animated kids series about a blue cat and his goldfish brother? Okay, consider me intrigued by that one. And if you are intrigued too, then watch the rest of this video and find out whether I was taking a bit of artistic license with the term trans episode or not. Am I? Aren't you? <laughs> For those who don't know what The Amazing World of Gumball is, it's a show that ran for around 10 years from 2011 to 2021, through a couple of different iterations like Darwin's Yearbook or the Gumball Chronicles, and it was crafted from a bunch of rejected commercial ideas to be the first project commission of Cartoon Network's development studio Europe specifically coming out of when the company asked everyone working to pitch something, and Ben Bocolet through this series about a 12-year-old cat named Gumball and his weird family of Darwin the adopted brother, Anais his sister, Nicole his mum, and Richard his father, all of whom live in the weird fictional town of Elmore in the weird fictional state of California, whose friends include such wacky fare as a T-Rex, a peanut, and a banana. As this article from 2011 about how the amazing world of Gumball came to be chose to describe the setting. It's actually kind of a fascinating origin story that is part of the expansion of American cartoon media into a more global stage. Look, the whole thing was pretty damn famous for the entirety of the 2010s, pulling in millions of viewers, obtaining international acclaim, and winning a bunch of British TV awards, like the BAFTAs, which are sort of the English version of an Emmy, only people care about it more. Oh, and it also got announced in 2023 for a seventh semi-revival season to be planned at some point in the future, which means that if this isn't a canonical blatant trans episode in this video, then you know what you have to do, Ben Buckler and Cartoon Network. You've got to fucking make one. It's 2024. Make an amazing world of Gumball trans episode for me. Anyway, you get the idea of what we're talking about, so let's dive into the central conversation today with Season 6, Episode 2, The Lady. The centre of this episode is the father of the group, Richard, the large pink rabbit character, and his involvement with some gender-bendy stuff to teach the kids some interesting lessons and ideas about gender narratives, dress, identity, roles, and even more. All of that crammed into ten minutes. I mean, how will they do it? Well, they start us off by having the kids get off school for the day. Hooray! Because their teachers ate candles and got high from them. Boo? Sorry kids, but there's no school today. The staff have all been evacuated to the hospital. Huh? The kind of high that comes from a really bad acid trip. So, I would still frankly question what was in those candles. You can eat candles without hallucinating and freaking out. Not that I have eaten candles, not even those really tasty looking ones that seem almost like they're inviting you to take a bite of them. Mm. Sorry, what were we talking about? Come on, let's go home. Oh yeah, the kids got off school for the day and are pumped about it despite the health concerns for their teachers as... Well, kids getting to not have to go to forced learning is one of the greatest things of any young person's life. As they're about to get home though, making some foreshadowing comments about Mr. Dad, which is what they call Richard, and what on earth he could be up to when they get back in, the door swings open and we see... Wait, isn't that Blanche from the Golden Girls? All I know is the sight of a Santa sets my body aflame with unbridled desire. Don't think kids in the 2010s are going to get that reference. So I guess this one really is for any adults watching to get surprised by. Gumball and Darwin are understandably concerned about this random lady they have never seen before in their house and knock aggressively on the door. 
only for it to be opened by their dad, with some smeared lipstick on his face. Richard tries to act like nothing is going on, arguing that the lipstick is actually from a vegetal, a red vegetal, because this is a kid's show and one of the key themes of kid's shows is having the main protagonist's children be savvy and insightful, while the adults are fucking idiots who don't seem to know what on earth is going on half the time. I was just eating some, uh, what's that awful stuff that's like fruit that people decorate plates with? You mean a vegetable? It's a central trope of getting children on your side. Have media that doesn't talk down to them or act like they are stupid and just need to shut up and let the adults talk. And here it has been used to get us to suspect the obvious thing which is that Richard is cheating on his wife with Blanche from the Golden Girls. Okay, stop lying, we saw her. Who is she? Uh, what's the name of those people that you pay to make your skin cry until you're thin? Let's get tangential for a second here. We've done at least two minutes of the Gumball episode, so I think I've earned it. You see, it's clear that they picked Blanche as the Golden Girl for this, because of her reputation as being the slutty one of the group. Powerful thighs and muscles rippling beneath his tunic. Wow, you could get aroused by Humpty Dumpty. She would always tell big stories about the men she hooked up with to the other gals and hype up her numbers. The thing is, all of that was just talk. As we learned in the Trans Golden Girls episode that I did, that's right, this is a secret saga, go watch that video. In that episode, Blanche is accused of sleeping with this politician by the politician to bump up his poll numbers, before we learn in a real surprise twist that had nothing to do with the first half of the episode, that the politician is also a trans man. Blanche Devereaux and I never had an affair. In 1968, I had an operation. Blanche gets angry at her gal pals for assuming that she would sleep with a married man just because she's attractive and spends time with guys a bunch. Something which comes around full swing into this episode, where the gumball writers are having that exact same thing play out in a meta sense. That we, the viewers, are supposed to think that Blanche is sleeping with Richard. Which, as I said, if you know the Golden Girls, you would know is an unfair meta-commentary on that character and completely against how she would actually act, which throws this whole thing into suspicion. A suspicion that, as we see, is rightfully earned. For the people who are not immersed within Golden Girls lore, like presumably the intended audience of The Amazing World of Gumball, I think most of them would just have the stereotype of Blanche to work from, if anything at all, a stereotype that is a little slut-shaming on the face of it, and that would assume she is capable of sleeping with married men, even though she totally wouldn't. Absolutely not! I will tell it to a judge, I will yell it from the highest mountaintops, I will swear to it on a stack of Bibles! Back to the show we're actually supposed to be talking about here though, the kids want to know who this lady is, and Richard keeps making up terrible and not believable at all answers slash excuses to try to throw them off his back, which means that Gumball and Darwin are left more suspicious than ever by the end of the conversation. But also because that gym bag he grabbed was a woman's purse. You hardly need to be a detective to figure out that something was up with Richard here. They tail Richard to the mall, which is not the gym as he said he was going to. Shock, horror, he was lying. And we see him perusing the women's perfume section, which Gumball immediately takes as him buying it for that woman they saw earlier, though Darwin offers the counter theory that he is maybe just buying it for himself. Ooh, I'm going to the gym! Liar! He's buying perfume for that woman. Maybe it's just for him. Now, I kind of like that. I kind of like the fact that the idea he is buying perfume that is intended for women for his own use is not used as a way to suggest that he is a woman or that he isn't a man, but that maybe he just likes it and that it doesn't necessarily demean his masculinity or stop him from being a dude. 
I mean, they don't say all that, obviously, but the casual and chill way in which the statement is dropped suggests the normalcy of doing something like that. We then cut to Richard going into a bathroom, a bi-gender bathroom, and by that I mean it literally. It's not gender neutral or unisex, it has two signs out front for both boys and girls, which means that non-binary people don't get to go in. No pissing for you at this supermarket. God, I am dying for a piss. I feel like someone's inflating a balloon full of urine inside me, and not in a good way. And Richard gets a little montage to serious music of him putting on the lipstick and the dress, and yeah, it, it turns out that Blanche is in fact just Richard in some rather impressive drag. <laughs> Holy shit, dude, you went from this to this? I mean, I've seen plenty of impressive trans timelines and drag transformations, but this has certainly got to be up there. You kind of literally swapped species in it. And then Richard, as Blanche, meets up with three other women in the Moor Fountain area, and yeah, okay, it's the rest of the Golden Girls. W what were you expecting? Of course it was going to happen. Of course it was going to be them. Who else do you think it was going to be? Samantha, finally! We've been waiting so long, Angela's clothes are back in fashion. <laughs> as Gumball and Darwin eavesdrop on the conversation, this whole scene just turns into literally any scene from a Golden Girls episode, with all the sass and older women jokes and laugh tracks slash studio laughter that was iconic for the show. But also, what's happening here? A girl needs to make some effort for her man. Samantha darling, the last time you were a girl, men still had gills. I Guys only want one thing, and it's to pretend to be a mature woman and talk about getting done up for your man and have gal pal chats about the men you are dating? I guess? Is... is that what men want? I... I don't know. All I do know is that Luke McKillen, a YouTuber, was the voice of B. Arthur slash Dorothy, Lorelai King was the voice of Rue McClanahan slash Blanche for this episode, Sandra Dickinson was the voice of Estelle Getty slash Sophia, and Lisa Ross was the voice of Betty White slash Rose. Which is just pretty cool because they did a fantastic job on the voices. It's all very convincing stuff as someone who watches the Golden Girls. That's not massively relevant to the episode or the analysis, but do you see the kind of research I do for you guys? Because trust me, it was not as easy as you would think to find out who voice acted which of those characters. As IMDb fucking sucks and didn't list all of them, and the show just listed everybody under other voices. I had to go digging through articles to find who did what. We now have the what is going on here in this Gumball episode. The question becomes more of a why now though. Why is Richard dressing up as a convincing representation of a classic older woman and meeting other older women? Well, the next scene is Richard as Samantha, the name that they are using for Blanche, yeah, it's not confusing at all, sitting in a park and waiting to meet that guy she was talking about from earlier, as the other Golden Girls spy on her, and Gumball and Darwin spy on them and Samantha, because they suspect that Samantha is meeting their father here. Ah, this is taking forever. <laughs> hmm. This is a complicated little setup we have. And you see, we as the audience know something that nobody else here knows, and the excitement is seeing how they're all going to react to finding out that their father is a crossdresser or trans woman, or who knows what exact gender fuckery this is going to fall under, and how the Golden Girls are going to react to find out that their friend is that father that those kids have. Hopefully everyone reacts well, and not in a transphobic manner. Fingers crossed. Anyway, Richard pretends to be making out of himself behind a tree doing the old hands-on-your-back trick that kids like to play with, I guess. And this is heartwarming for the Golden Girls, who think their pal is hooking up with a man, and horrifying for the kids who think that their dad is a cheater. <laughs> I can't believe it. Though I want to be clear that there is no need for Gumball to drop this line in response. Dad always said Mom was out of his league, but I never thought he'd want to get back down into his own league. Fuck off, alright kid? 
Blanche is a very attractive older woman, and absolutely not in a lower league because of that. Richard would be fucking lucky to get Blanche, okay? Anyone would. Until I blossomed into young womanhood and realised I was even more devastating by moonlight. Richard gets back home to an interrogation, as Darwin and Gumball confront him on the fact that they know about Samantha, or at least they think they know about Samantha which Richard is rather chill about, and seems to take pretty calmly, all things considered. Um, I mean, he thinks they know he dresses up as a gal to meet other gals, so I guess that kind of explains that. But also, the culture that we live in is not one that is super friendly towards that idea being normalised. So, still kind of props, I think, for being so comfortable and confident that being challenged on it isn't something you are afraid of. We know about Samantha. Oh, well, I guess you were bound to find out one day. This whole scene is designed to be kind of rough, because of the fact that both sides have a different view of what is happening here, with the kids being incredibly aggressive and aggravated by the kind of responses that Richard is making, and Richard giving us the insight that he is doing the Samantha thing because he has to do something to keep himself entertained during the day. I've got to find some way of keeping myself entertained. <laughs> Entertained? Yeah, sure, that's as good a reason as any to live two lives as different genders, I suppose. Boredom. So there's a side thing here during this scene worth mentioning, though. That the reaction the kids are having to this, while tempered around their belief that this is a cheating scandal, does in fact align, I think, with a fear that people have when it comes to breaking gender barriers in whatever way that might be not necessarily trans, and how the people in their lives will react to it. The lines that Gumball are throwing out here are ones that very well do seem to express that expected disgust from people towards gender variants, and to those who don't so easily exist within the binary, like Richard. I think I'm gonna be sick. Our dad has a secret double life. Darwin, smash another plate. And I think that that is going to play a very key part when it comes time for the main characters to find out the actual truth about what Richard is doing. That their real reactions to discovering the reality of the situation will hopefully be a funny comparison to what the bigoted reaction that they accidentally looked like they were displaying in this scene is. Under the guise of this still perceptively bigoted family reaction though, Richard eventually acquiesces to the demands of his kids to end this double life, because of the impact that it is having on them and the fact that he is lying to people and he commits to telling the other gals the truth, and then burning all the Samantha stuff so that he can never go back. When the kids do finally see the truth, the truth that in fact Mr. Dad is Samantha, as he leaves to go and ruin his friendship with those sassy girls, Gumball and Darwin commit to stopping him, as what he has is beautiful, and they were mistakenly pushing him on the wrong thing into doing the wrong thing. So we better stop him before he ruins his beautiful friendship with those sassy girls. There it is. There is the positivity we was waiting for. The kids are supportive of him doing this, are supportive of the cross-dressing, of the gender swapping, because it looks like it's a good friendship, and they didn't want to ruin that. Oh, also, before the big confrontation scene with all the characters that gives us the final and promisingly pro-gender fuckery morality, there is this really funny joke from the other Golden Girls that I would feel remiss to not include. Was at a time when society wasn't as tolerant as it is now. People were only allowed to marry a potato from a different farm. Richard then bursts in, says that he is going to reveal the truth, and begins removing stuff to the confused and not quite getting it reactions of the other Golden Girls, before he's stripped basically naked to his underwear, and the Dorothy character shouts that he's a man to the Rose character. Ah, you're a naturist? He's a man, Violet! The gals don't seem to be reacting that well to the information, and do seem to be quite fixating on the guy thing, you know, hashtag problematic. But we find out some more from Richard, that he was a bored house husband, 
who tried to make guy friends, but found that the cult of masculinity was not really his thing. That all the dude stuff just really didn't click. Like, he literally says, I guess I'm just not that great at being a man. But I guess I'm just not that great at being a man. Before he saw the Golden Girls being free and loving and themselves, and then took whatever steps he felt were necessary to get into that friend group. We then learn that two of the other Golden Girls are also just men pretending to be mature women because they don't fit in with societal expectations, though it seems that the Sophia character does actually appear to be just an older woman who's along for the ride, I guess? We all felt the same way. Yes, me too. I guess not. All the guys then say that, well, if the choice is between having to pretend to be mature women so they can stick together and be friends, or having to go back to being lonely, effeminate dudes with no friends, then it's pretty clear what they have to do. While Gumball and Darwin get progressively more annoyed on the sidelines and keep telling them that they don't have to pretend to be women to be friends, they all know now they can just hang out. They can just be friends until the music that's not quite the Golden Girls music but is close enough and the montage cuts in and cuts off Gumball mid argument. No, you don't! You've been a pal to me. Gumball realises that this is the thing that they want to do, that they enjoy the role and the dress and the character, and gives us the final statement on the subject and the episode. Eh, whatever floats your boat. And when you're needing a helping hand. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. And that's it. Now, was it a trans episode? No. It was an episode about how lonely guys who don't fit in with societal expectations of manhood dress up as women to hang out with each other and perform gender narratives that they otherwise would not be able to, and that after they reveal the truths about each other, they commit to continuing to live that double life because there is something in the gender performance that clearly is fun or engaging for them, and that ultimately the show commits to to a whatever works for you and the people around you message. Definitely not a cis episode though, absolutely fucking not. It's more of an in-between episode, exploring that grey area that exists outside of the binary perception some people cling to on what an episode about gender has to be, and I am all about breaking those binary models. Now, some of you might be thinking, hang on, that's that's one of the gender bender episodes of Gumball, but there are others that I would call the trans episode, and why have you done those? And you're right. So before we conclusion on the show and the episode, let's talk about those other times storylines featured divulsions from the gender norms we've come to accept, and how those narratives might impact the way that Gumball developed its gender acceptance to what we saw here in this The Lady episode. You didn't seriously think I was just going to talk about one episode and restrain myself there, did you? That's never been the motto of the channel. If I find other stuff, I'm going to end up talking about it. Anyway, we're going to also be discussing Season 1's Episode 6, The Dress, and Season 5's Episode 20, The Catfish. Though, as they are not the central focus of the video, I will not be doing a full commentary breakdown, instead just giving you the quick rundown on what we need to know. The Dress is an episode centred around Gumball putting on a dress, because all of his clothes have shrunk, and he cannot go to school naked, and the hijinks that evolve from that situation. Take out your math homework! Those hijinks involve stuff like his own brother hitting on him because he convinces all of his classmates that he's a girl named Gumball Oops Egg Wobble Underpants and finds that everyone is treating him differently because they now perceive him to be a girl. A different treatment that Gumball abuses to get what he wants 
a decision that ultimately backfires with that whole his brother hitting on him and being a little bit coming on too hard for comfort to someone who views their relationship platonically. Ah, some classic gender swap episode stuff there. I know it might seem cringe to check in with someone if they want to kiss you before you go in for it, but you know what's more cringe than not checking? Non-consensual shit. The dress ends with Darwin being convinced that his love is killed by going up to the sun and exploding, before then falling in love with a fire hydrant wearing the dress that falls onto it as Gumball gets laughed at everyone for being naked. It isn't exactly a great episode from a gender perspective, it doesn't spend a lot of time on exploring the idea of what it's like to be a girl for Gumball, instead moving very quickly into him abusing and then getting scared of that gender identity that he adopted. Besides, he might tell everyone about the dress and I'll lose my powers! It is interesting, however, that there isn't necessarily any judgement on Gumball for that fact, that he pretended to be a girl, nor for the fact that he views himself as a beautiful one, and that everyone else seems to agree with that based on how they treat him. Nobody gets some comeuppance here or discovery that ruins that in a transphobic way. I also like that one of Gumball's plans for dealing with Darwin was to just pretend to be a girl for a few years and hope that he will move on. Like, yeah, that's totally a normal and regular idea that cis people have. What if I just swapped genders for a long period of time out of, um, hmm, necessity? Maybe if I keep up the act, then in a few years Darwin will move on and meet another girl. Another girl. Another girl. A lot of people that I found on both the Gumball Reddit and the Gumball Wiki, though, seemed to be on the page that this episode was in some way transphobic. That it was saying that guys can never be girls. Frankly, I don't really know how they got there, unless they were actively looking for that affirmation. Because nothing in the show really gives you that to work with. I'm sorry, guy on the wiki who posted this comment. I don't think Gumball said that. Gumball is perfectly fine bouncing around gender performativity, and none of the characters except for Anise actually know that he is pretending to be a girl, so we don't get any confrontation on that front. It's kind of more just a take on Gumball's innate femininity and comfortability exploring that identity, which does bring us to our next episode to briefly touch upon the catfish wherein Gumball and Darwin find out that their granddad is a sad, sad, lonely man. Huh. Wow. Strange that both Grandpa Louie and Dad Richard have a similar plotline within Gumball of having trouble finding friends and maintaining social relationships. Wonder if you could interpret that to speak to a larger problem that occurs for a lot of men, who don't find ways to form connections outside of romantic relationships, work and school. I'm sure there is no statistical horrors hidden within that loneliness that somehow get replicated by Gumball in a fashion via a commentary on masculinity as a form of exclusion and way in which people don't get the skills to just pick up new casual friends. Scouting the hoop with his basketball stick. But anyway, they discovered this via Elmore Plus, the site for the town, which I guess is a thing that happens in America, because I saw something similar in that Life is Strange True Colors video game, and ooh, gotta stop myself from talking about Life is Strange, gotta holster that conversation for when I can milk a four hour fucking video out of it for Christmas or something like that. Gumball and Darwin see how sad it is, the sadness being part of this meme scene that I saw a bunch and never knew what the greater context of it was. So I'm happy that I now know where that came from. I feel nothing for him. Nothing. I know you're holding back because- And Gumball then decides that the best way to help out their grandpa is by creating an entirely fictitious person to pretend to be Louis's friend and that at least to him it won't be imaginary and that's 
gotta be good enough. However, the important part of this scene, and frankly this whole episode, is the small bit where Gumball commits to making the character a woman. And Darwin doesn't understand why that would need to be the case, to which we get this reply. But why do you have to make her a woman? It's just how I feel inside. <sighs> okay. Do... Do I need to say anything here? I mean, sure, this is played in a funny way, because this is a comedy, but taken in context of everything that we learn about Gumball over the course of the show, this being something that he feels about himself really isn't that much of a stretch. Anything for a beautiful girl. You're right. I am beautiful. I hope it gets explored in the new season that comes out, because... Well, because that would be a great payoff to a bunch of hints, as well as a great justification for this entire video, I could post a pinned comment on it saying, I was fucking right. I knew Gumball was going to be a trans woman. I knew it. The rest of this episode, however, just devolves into their grandpa being a weirdo and immediately rushing to meet with this created character, IRL, due to having problems with their grandma, the grandma turning into a Terminator and hunting down the person whose photo they used to create the character Muriel that Gumball wanted to play, while the kids do their best to stop Grandma, and finally the revelation that it's the Grandma's controlling behaviour around Grandpa Louie that led him to not really have any IRL friends, as she loves him so much that she stopped him from seeing his other friends. You don't really let me see my other friends anymore. It's just I love you so much, Louis. Which is a toxic relationship. And that's that episode. Hopefully you see what I mean with neither of these really being big enough to do a whole thing on, but they do add some context at least to the way that characters in Gumball are engaging frequently in gender-bendy behaviour, or expressing things that exist outside of the stereotypical cisgender norms that we might come to expect. What is the great conclusion that I have here then? What's the big takeaway that I haven't already said about Gumball and its transness or trans-adjacentness that's gonna shock the audience into subscribing to my Patreon? Well, I think the big one is just that there are so many shows like this that have episodes with themes that speak to trans experiences or which encourage cis people to think outside of the regular bounds of gender binary and hard-coded existence that they might have come to see as rigid and unchangeable. Gumball explores gender roles with the characters it features. It questions stereotypes and who can fill those stereotypes, considering in some small fashion for children what that means for them and ultimately presenting a view on it that normalises that wondering identity, that normalises feeling or expressing oneself differently to the binary. It's not inherently transgender, but it does build many of the building blocks towards trans identities and trans acceptance all placed within a kid's show where I do think it's important for children to learn that these things are okay. A man can dress up as a woman to hang out with a bunch of other women, and that's not a big deal. The kids can feel like they're a girl inside, and that's fine for them. They can explore that if they want. A boy can wear a dress, and it might not make him a girl automatically unless that's how he feels, but it does mean he can feel beautiful and be that way. It's the messages that are not explicit, but which push us in the right direction, and that is definitely absolutely not just part of the mainstream cis narrative that has dominated the culture for so long. Which means that it's a thumbs up from me for the amazing world of Gumball. Cool stuff. Put a trans character in the new season and make that trans character Gumball, you darn cowards. Do it. If you liked what I said here, or liked what I was doing, or just enjoyed my role as background noise, then sweet. That's about all I can really ask for. Oh, I suppose I could also ask that you like, share, subscribe, comment, go watch some of my other videos that might interest you, especially maybe the ones that are a bit more obscure, because legitimately there is some surprising stuff in there that I think is worth considering, and I think a lot of people miss because it's in shows that they just don't know or haven't heard of. 
If you really like what I've done, then the best way to help the channel is by going to my Patreon or becoming a member here on YouTube. These videos take a fair bit of time to make, and it's really hard to do that while also looking for other employment at the same time. Especially with how the economy is in New Zealand right now for people with sociology degrees. Shit. So having a steady reliable income like what Patreon offers lets me better plan my YouTube around what I want to do and to not be so focused on job stuff that would take me away from being able to make these videos as much as I would like to. Especially considering the fact that AdSense is not that great for what I'm making. The pay is pretty mediocre and many of my biggest videos are in a near constant war for copyright claims or limited ads, looking at you Harry Potter and South Park. So if you want to alleviate my money concerns, Patreon is a great way to do that. Those in the $5 and up category should have been scrolling past the screen for the past paragraph, and I really do appreciate all the people on there for helping to make this channel something that I get to keep doing and get to seriously do. Without them, I would not be here, and half the videos that I have made just would not have gotten made at all. So it's pretty amazing to have that kind of security net. Other than all of this, thank you for watching the video, and I hope you have a great day.